you don't have to shoot the ball well to, to, to stay competitive. I mean, it helps winning games, but I thought we I thought we were active on the defensive end, Garrison and Mo. I thought they did a great job of of guarding their man, playing, talking, communicating, fighting through, playing with toughness. I thought that was a big part of our win. And what was the key to holding Jason Tatum to the night that he had? I mean, we we were we were good, but he had an off night. All stars have off nights. Big time players have off nights. It's, they're not they're not it's not a video game every night. Even though sometimes it looks that way, it's not. Brad's had a few of them himself. Um, but I thought we were I thought we contested shots. We showed bodies. We were good. We this was one of our best getting back in transition. We talked about it many times. You know, you just got to keep doing your job and and not get happy with the win, not get too down with the loss. We got we got a lot of things moving right now, and we just got to play for one another. And I thought we did that tonight throughout the game. Ava. Scott, um, going in a little bit more on, on Mo, where do you think he impacted the game most? It looked like he was able to bring a lot um, just with his energy as well. His energy in his mouth. Mo, Mo talks. He communicates. Sometimes you want him to be quiet at times, but I like that. I like the fact that he's always engaged. You, you hear him behind when he's not playing. He's still on the, on the bench talking. I think that's, I think he impacted the game that way. He sets good screens. You know, he knows how to, he finishes around. He's not the, the most athletic guy, but he uses angles, uses, uses, um, um, just use, knows how to use his body. Uh, but I think he, he impacts the game. I think just he communicates. He's, he's very vocal out there. And you mentioned kind of the um, lower shooting, but what do you think of the ball movement tonight? It was good. It was good. You know, we still haven't made a lot of shots. Uh, and just I just look at DB. You know, one of the things that I I always look at, you know, he's he's going to make his shots. That's not that's not even I like him to start the season that way. I like him to not miss uh, a lot of his good looks that he's had. But the one thing that I always look at is his rebounding. You know, he's averaging a little less than uh, one and a half, I think, over last year. But he had eight rebounds tonight. Uh, he, get, he has to get in there. We need we need his um, his length. We need him to get in there. And I thought tonight, I thought tonight was one of his best games. And I don't even know what he ended up shooting. But tonight was one of his best games because he was he was active on the defensive end. Fred. Scott, you guys have talked a lot about communication as one of your key defensive issues this year. And you mentioned it with Mo. When you are communicating well, what's the actual effect? Like, what does that look like on defense when you are communicating well? Well, it, it helps. We got, we have some quiet personalities and sometimes uh, it's hard to get anything out of them. But I think as they get more comfortable, they're going to be able to, you're going to be able to be able to hear their voice more. But when we talk, it helps, it helps the defense. I mean, it helps your defense. No, there's no second guessing. Because when you, when you, when you got, everybody knows the coverage, but when you can hear them, hear the coverage out. And I think Mo does a great job with that because he's not, he's not shy, as you all know. Um, but, but it helps. It helps with his, um, with his voice. And I thought, I thought tonight we were just active. We got back in transition defense. That's been a Achilles heel for, for a while now. We weren't worried about hanging around, uh, trying to get a, a, an, an offensive rebound or jamming up the rebound. We were getting back and getting to our defensive stance. We talked about that. We walked through it uh, yesterday. You got to get down and bend your knees. You got to get down. It's simple. Told them we all done it. We all started the game the same way. You got to bend your knees before you start playing defense. Maybe this is too abstract of a question, but is it is it more harmful to have – like a big man, for for example, on the back end of your defense who doesn't communicate at all and just, just kind of quiet, or one who maybe misidentifies plays or coverages and calls out the wrong stuff? <laughs> Dang. I'm confused with that question. I, I, it, it's, it's important that you have everybody communicate. It's important because there's, there's so many – there's so many moving parts. There's so many misdirection plays. There's so many uh, weak side actions, strong side actions. You got to, everybody has to communicate. 
And that's, it takes time. You don't just come in this league and play and start as a young player and all of a sudden telling veterans what to do. It just doesn't happen that way. But you need to be able to communicate. Your voice needs to be able to heard. And I know eventually it's going to be better. Uh, it, it takes patience. It takes patience. I know everybody wants all of our guys to do it perfect and, and they, they're going to get better day by day. And we're going to stay with them. We're going to stay even keel with them. And it's tough at times, trust me, but you got to still do it and you got to stay with it and, and have some fun along the way because it's a great game that we all love. And, but communications, it takes time. It just doesn't say, hey, you just got to talk. You got to yell at the coverage. It takes time to see it, internalize it, and know what you're saying is correct. Neil. Scott, do you expect Russ to play tomorrow? And if that's still a TBD kind of thing, what exactly do you guys look for and assess, you know, the day of? Is it him saying, yes, I'm ready to go or not? Is it your medical team saying something? That's a combination of medical and Russell. They know, Russell knows his body. And, and Dr. Davis knows his body very well. Whatever they decide on tomorrow, I will make an adjustment. We won't know till tomorrow and whatever it is, if he sits, if he sits out for the rest and not ready to play the back to back, we live with that. We deal with what we have and how we'll play some more minutes. He was, I think he might've been even off restrictions tonight for the first time. And then we got to figure out who plays the backup. Troy, Bonga or somebody. Russ started the fourth quarter and, you know, added a four extra minutes to his game total. Did that, take into account in the decision tomorrow or does that not really add up to too much no nah, that doesn't i mean no i mean that doesn't add up it's just gonna how he feels tomorrow we don't know we'll, we'll find out tomorrow you know afternoon sometime or when he gets here we'll get here usually i think at 4 15 meeting nicole hi coach congrats for the win at this hello, point, Nicole. hi, hello. At this point in the season, what do you think about the develop of the rookie Denny Atilla? Atilla? Um, he's developing um, at a good pace. It's hard. It's this is not a league that it's not easy, as you know. There's a lot of first, second, third, fourth year players struggle. It's it takes time. I think his work ethic, his toughness is going to continue to help him along the way during the, the valleys that he will have, that every rookie has. And he just can't get discouraged. You got to stay mentally tough. And my job is to keep him confident. And it's hard. Trust me, it's hard. When you, he's just turned 20, doesn't have 20 games in the NBA yet. But I like, I like, I like how he plays. He plays with a good, good feel for the game. He's still learning. He's still learning how to how to use his strength. He's still learning his shot is, you know, it's a little inconsistent right now, but it's not, it's not broke. And it just has the reps that, that he has, but I like, it's a, it's a great, he's a, he's going to be a really good player for us, but I like, I like his work ethic. That's uh, you cannot, even yesterday, he worked, he was one of the few guys that really got after it before we even had our film session yesterday. And at times you know, he didn't want to do it as much as he probably needed to do it. But our coaches did a good job of getting it out of them. But I think it helps. You got to do a little bit every day. And some days you don't feel like doing it. Those are the days you have to do it because those are the days that nobody wants to do it. They don't do it. But if you're mentally tough, you do it on those days. Zach. Hey, Coach. Uh, Rui didn't plan the fourth quarter today. Uh, I'm assuming you were giving him a breather, but he was a plus 13. Uh, what did you think of his performance today? One of his best games of the year. He was he was active on defense. I look because he's going to have to continue to get better guarding guys that that are smaller than him, and sometimes guarding guys that are bigger than him when we do our switching. And he has to get used to that. Everybody can shoot. He has a he has a sometimes he has a bad tendency to close out about a foot short. And these are some great shooters in the league, and it, it costs you. But I thought tonight he did it one time. I thought one time only. And that's a big time step. And he ran the floor. He got a couple of layup opportunities. Russell made a bad pass. He would have had another layup. But those are those are the areas that we have to get him better. We you impact the game not by just 
shooting shooting mid range shots. You're impacted by running, getting to the rim, getting to the free throw line. You impact the game defensively, and that's what he. I thought he did that tonight. Rebounds kind of come and go for him because we we switch like mo every team in the league one through four at times, and he's going to guard a lot of perimeter guys. So those rebounds are going to come nights, and they're not going to be there some other nights. Kellen. Hey, Coach, I know we've talked about this throughout the season, but, you know, Brad scored 35 today and which starting to feel almost routine. What has he specifically improved on, you know, throughout this season? And how would you describe what he's done so far this year? Um, the mental toughness is is just it's there. You know, we're not didn't have the start that we had we played a lot of guys. That, you know during that tough stretch that we had when everybody was out those three games on the road, but I thought he show, he stayed with it. And that was an easy opportunity to just throw, throw your hands up. You know what? I'll just, I'll wait till the group comes back, but that's a sign of our, of our leader. You know, he's going to continue to improve his game physically. The game has slowed down mentally for him. But it's just a slower pace. And it's, that's happened three or four years ago. But he's one of the best players in the league. He's not one of the best guards. He's one of the best all around players in the league. And, and he's going to have to continue to lead and fight, fight uh, to get us out of this, this, this hole. And tonight, today was obviously a good start. You know, we had a tough outing last night or two nights ago. We bounced back. I thought he played, played good. You know, he had a day off the rest. So his body and obvious, obviously felt good having those three or three and a half days off. All right, we'll finish up with Penny. Hey, Scott. Uh, we saw Danny as a primary ball handler in the fourth quarter, and I wanted to know if this is something the team wants to explore in the future for bigger stretches also uh, during the course of the game. Yeah, I mean, how how do you think he did? Um, I think he did quite good, but he could could have done better. Okay, I agree with you. Great answer. I just, honestly, I just try um, to do what I can do. Um, and I don't know, that's for you to judge, but uh, I'm out there playing as hard as I can and um, trying to, to play the role that makes sense. And I'm happy we got a win. And uh, the beautiful thing is we have another opportunity tomorrow. Chase. Well, what was the key for you guys on the defensive end? Um... Not, not just the, great, the good start, but sustaining that throughout the game. I do think the start has a lot to do with it. Um, just not getting down in the first quarter. Um, and I don't even mean points. I just mean mentally, like, try, keep trusting each other and keep being uplifted um, and engage throughout the whole first half. And then, um, yeah, once you establish that certain trust, it's, it's kind of easier to go into the second half and keep on going like that. So... Uh, we gotta, we gotta be sure to have that defensive intensity every every game. Um, a shot don't fall and all that stuff. And then I think what's vital too is rebounding. We've been str not, not really struggling, but um, that's something big for us, so we can go out out and run. And you guys held Jason Tatum to about twenty points below his scoring average. Uh, what was the approach against him today? I mean, he's good, so. <laughs> What is the approach? You try to not have him score as much. I mean, you uh, you have him you have him see bodies. Um, you be physical with him. Honestly, same thing with the, what people do to Brad. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty simple approach. It's not easy to execute, but I mean, it worked today. Fred. Hey, Mo. Um, Scott talked a lot about your ability to communicate on defense. How, how have you changed as a communicator as you've become more experienced in the league? I think, um, I mean, communicating has always been something that I value as a player. Um, but I do think I've changed in a way that the game has slowed down for me a little bit in the sense that even if I'm not playing, whether that he is here or in Los Angeles, I'm always trying to kind of try to learn the game a little better and understand it. So um, the execution on the court, I have to think as much. So um, this is nothing final. I'm, for me, I'm still learning every day to be out there. And I, the big thing for me is to be consistent at that. 
and um, not call out wrong coverages out of the blue, which happens once in a while. But I rather talk a lot than not at all. And sometimes I slip with mistakes, but um, um, we'll be fine if, if we all talk. So um, that's kind of my approach. When you're out there and you do have one of those slip ups, you call out a wrong coverage. How, how do you make up for that in the moment? Like what's your next move to try to recover from the mistake? I mean, effort, the mistake's done, next play. Um, it's a beautiful thing in basketball. It's not a perfect sport, so you can't really expect that going into the game. Uh, maybe apologize, depending on who is it on the ball. But other than that, just next play, man. And um, that's how you develop trust, you know. Ava? Mo, you uh, mentioned the mental effects kind of of the good start, but what does this win, especially having it come from the defensive end, do for your guys' confidence overall? Yeah, I think it's never been the question of whether we're capable or not. Um, I think there's just sometimes we slip up uh, in the trust in ourselves and we get down on ourselves too quickly. Um, obviously, it doesn't help giving up 40 point quarters. Um, that's not how you build trust with each other. So, um, we know we're capable. Uh, I mean, we're well coached. We, we're all tough guys. We're all here for a reason. Uh, I think it's, it's it's a matter of trusting ourselves. And then also, I mean, we talk about one game right now. You know, we have an next one tomorrow, and we've won seven or eight games total this year. So I mean, we've got to pick it up and be consistent with it. And um, Scott and a couple of the other players have mentioned a really good walkthrough that you guys had yesterday, just a really good film session. Do you think that carried over, especially on the, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> on the defensive end? I mean, no, for sure. I think we do the walkthrough every day, but it's a little different because it's an early game and we're at practice yesterday and that's the, what was our walkthrough. And I think it's just a certain sense of urgency and that has to start in walkthroughs. I can't just start when you when you get to the arena. You kind of have to have the mindset what you're going to do in the game that the day before or when you're in practice and kind of locking in on the next player. And like next tomorrow is a whole different matchup than today. So um, you got to kind of shift your mind and um, that got to start earlier than when you step into these walls. The last however many games you guys have kind of gotten off to slow starts and today was the total opposite why, why do you think you guys were were so different in that first quarter uh first praise my lord and savior jesus christ um i think it was just we were just locked in you know from the practice we had yesterday and coming in today uh, you know we we knew who we were playing we knew what was at stake you know it was you know we can come out lack of days of school and we can be down 30 early or you know we can be ready to go and you know battle from the jump so we just uh, <clears throat> we came out and played our game. We we came out and everybody stuck to stuck to the roles and competed at a high level, accepted the challenges on the defensive end from Jalen, from Jason, and Kimba. And you know we 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 tried to make it as tough as we possibly could, and we and we did that. Eva, Brad, um, going off of what you said, what does this type of win? do for your guys' confidence where it came from the defensive end and it came after a big day where you're like, okay, we had the chance to work on this in practice and we were able to go out and execute exactly what we wanted to do. It's, it's a big boost, uh, 100%. But, you know, on, a, on the other side, you know, we still didn't do a lot of things perfect. You know, a lot of things we we were messing up on the fly, but I think our effort is what saved us. You know, we, we had multiple efforts from everybody, uh, everybody being locked into the game. And, you know, it wasn't one man just, you know, being out of out of uh, out of sync. So it was that's what we need. You know, we, we kind of showed our hand of, of what we're capable of doing. And, you know, now, like I've been saying the last couple of games, just consistency. We got to build on, that. you know, we got to be definitely excited about getting the win against a great team. But, you know, we got another one coming in tomorrow that we got to get we got to get some get back on. Jeff. Hey, Brad, this is really a big Jan Ed. Um, what does it mean to you to be the face of this franchise? And, and what responsibility do you think you carry? Oh, I mean, it's a blessing because you don't take it for granted. You understand that there's only 450 guys in the NBA and there's only 30 teams. And, you know, every team has, you know, a quote unquote star or, or you know, superstar on their team. And, the franchise guy and for me to you know for the wizards to entrust me with that you know that's a that's an honorable position 
uh, you know, one that I don't take for granted, you know, I don't take lightly. And, you know, I kind of, I put a lot more pressure on myself than probably what comes with the, with the job, I guess, you know, we're still players, you know, we're still, yeah, we're a cornerstone of our organization, but, you know, at the same time, we have high expectations for ourselves as franchise guys. And I definitely do here in DC. Uh, I've been here for nine years. And so, you know, I just try to give it my all every time I step out into the floor. Uh, I believe I became a, be a, a better leader. I'm not, probably the greatest one yet but you know I'm, I'm definitely working my way towards it uh, but you know I'm definitely happy that the organization and trust me you know to be able to lead them to be able to grow our young players and to be a representation of them on and off the floor. Chase. Hey Brad what was different about the three-point defense in particular today? Uh, I think we just tried to, we, we contested, you know, I think uh, one of our coaches told us the other day, Brooks really drilled us on it. Like uh, we, we have to be better at contesting, you know, we have to get, you know, us being in, in the vicinity of guys isn't good enough. You know, we have to be able to get hands up and alter shots, make guys miss. Um, and I think we, we kind of did that tonight. Granted, we, a lot of them got some open ones on the pick and roll. They were able to hit a few, which we, we, we got to make better adjustments on, but uh I think for the most part, we, we made them miss, you know, we got good hands out, good contests, you know, we rotated well flying around. And, you know, when you see guys like that, we're energetic, we're flying, it makes it tough for them to make plays. And then how did you guys hold uh, Jason Tatum to only six points today? Oh, no, uh, I, I, I really don't know. It was just one of those nights for him. You know, we all have them. Hell, I had one last week. Um, you know, it happens. You know, he's still a star. He's still a great player in this league. Uh, he let us off the hook for sure. Uh, he should have been, should have stayed in attack mode and stayed, in, in, stayed aggressive. Uh, but I think him being in foul trouble early on kind of hurt, hurt him, hurt his rhythm. And, uh, and, you know, we just tried to make it as difficult as possible, which is a tough guard. Zach. Hey, Brad. Uh, Coach Brooks earlier said that this was one of Rui's best games of the season. Um, but what kind of development or, or improvement have you seen from him, especially on defense? Uh, just the game is starting to slow down for him. You know, as as you play more games, I don't even think Rui's played a full, full season yet. But as you play more games, like the game begins to slow down for you. Uh, your reads and then we'll play teams multiple times. So you, you know what to expect. You know guys' tendencies. And Rui knows that he's a guy, he said it himself yesterday, he can guard one through five, you know? And so we hold him to that standard. We hold him to that, you know, to their role. And I think he definitely accepts it. He accepted it tonight. And every single time he's he's in a switching situation, he gets in the stands and, you know, he guards his tail off and he rebounds the ball too. So uh, he's he's growing tremendously. You know, the sky's the limit for him. I think what's the beauty of it is so versatile. Uh, on both hands, he can shoot threes. He can give you mid-range post, post up finish at the rim above the rim. So, uh, you know, he's a three level scorer for us and we're happy that, you know, the sky's the limit for him and he has a lot of room to grow. Thank you. Winston. Hey Brad, I'm sure you're definitely refreshed after having the night off the other night, but um, I know that coming into tomorrow, uh, it's gonna be a big night, um, an emotional night. Uh, do you expect any, uh, do you expect emotions to be high uh, tomorrow night? Uh, yes and no. I mean, it'll be emotional for John and myself too, for him to be back in the building. But, you know, we're, I mean, it's the Wizards versus Houston. You know, we're, we're past that. And, you know, it'll be, I think it'll be different with fans in the building, you know, for, for them to be able to show their love to John. You know, we don't have that. So I don't know if that, that same hype and emotion will be there. Uh, he'll definitely be passionate and, and come in and, you know, talk his trash and want to try to get a win. Uh, like John, like the John we know, but, you know, we got to be better than the first time we played him. Uh, and I think we will be. Rich. Uh, Brad, what did the, um, what did the night off do to you? Did you really feel refreshed today? I really did. Uh, you know, it was, it was a mental unwind and physical unwind. My body was a little beat up, uh, but it was just good to be able to get away away from the game for a minute and, uh, you know, be with wifey, be with my boys and, uh, and just kind of just unwind a little bit. You know, it's always good. Uh, I put so much pressure on myself to do well and, you know, to try to lead and be the best I can possibly be, try to come out and win every game and just need a little break, you know, you can't do everything by yourself. You can't do everything, you know? So I think just taking that step back and, 
realizing what we have, trusting your teammates, and then our practice yesterday was was probably the icing on the cake. So uh, it's good that everything is coming together, but consistency is the key. And last question to Kellen. Hey, Brad, another 30 plus point game for you. And I asked Coach Brooks earlier, just, you know, what he felt like you've improved on. And I'm paraphrasing here, but he mentioned your mental toughness, your leadership, and that the game has been slowing down for you. I guess, what do you feel like you've improved on the most this year? And when you're saying slowing down, like you mentioned for Rui, you know, is it is that just becoming more familiar with everything? For sure. You know, it's being, you know, more familiar uh, you know, you do the same things over and over again. A lot of teams plays end up being the same. You know, we, we play similar styles, you know, in this league and it's kind of a copycat league. We say all the time, uh, but for Rui, it's, you know, when the game slows down, it's just a mental thing. You know, you're, you're more confident in your game. You know, you're able to make reads before plays happen. And for me, it, I feel like that's, it's really my confidence level, you know, just believing in myself. Uh, you know, just constantly believing and trusting my work that I put in. And uh, and then we have a guy who pushes us every night. Like, Russ pushes me. He pushes everybody to be ready to go. And I think that's something that I've definitely channeled this year is just making sure that I'm, I'm ready to compete on a nightly basis. You know, no nights off, going at it, going hard each and every night, no matter if I'm feeling good, feeling bad, playing good, playing bad. You know, you have to be the leader. You have to be able to showcase that, you know, when times are good, you're, you're still rolling. If times are bad, you're rolling. But, you know, don't get too high, don't get too low. Hey, Russ, this was uh, one of your guys' best games defending the three-point line. Um, what what worked for you today? I would just play with effort. You did a good job of competing you know, from start to finish. Ava? Uh, Russ, what did you see out of Mo and how he impacted the game? Uh, his energy, his alertness, um, his savviness, he does a lot of things that don't go in the stat sheet that really helps us communicate on defensive end. Uh, he did a good job tonight. Shy. Hey, Russell. Um, I want to know, what what's it like uh, for you playing with a rookie like Danny Avdia, who's always hungry for Ws? And can you take us through somewhat of a reaction um, from what you guys thought when he tried to dunk on Taco? Um, Danny's been good. He's getting better as the season prolongs. Uh, he will find his way in this league. He's going to be a good player for a long time. Kellen? Hey, Russ. Um, I just asked Brad, like, um, what do you feel like he's improved on the, the most this season? He mentioned that you push him every night. And so what do you feel like he's improved on throughout the season? Uh, just his awareness. He understand, understands uh, how to make shots. He's able to score, as we all know. Um, but my job is to make sure he do it every night uh, because that's what the greats do. Uh, and he has the ability to be able to do it at a high level and uh, – my job as a, as a leader is to make sure that he's every night miss and make shots. Just make sure that he's in attack mode and being aggressive because uh, that's when we're at our best. And last question to Neil. Hey, Russ. Uh, Brad talked about the focus you guys came into with this game and how that attributed to a better start in the game. What's the key to carrying that over into future games? Uh, you know, just trying to create some consistency. Uh, and defensively, offense will come, but defensively, we were locked in and ready to go. Uh, 